Well, welcome to Out and About, brought to you by KCRVs and Motorsports. I'm John Thomas alongside J.E. Cornwell, and we are next to our Motorsports stock. We got some Kimco scooters behind us. We got a used Bergman in front of us. We got a couple of e bikes, uh, which are totally rad, by the way. Pretty cool, man. We also got a go kart, some other goodies, four wheelers, and we got something to haul those things in, too, if you're interested in that. But right now, the crux of the conversation is Motorsports. JE, how did you acquire all of this awesomeness? <laughs> well, I love awesomeness. Uh, I love the toys, actually. Uh, you know, somebody said, I don't know who said it, but he who dies with the most toys wins, yeah. you know, so. Um, I have was introduced to uh, four-wheeling uh, on an old Polaris Ranger many years ago. And I was out in the country, out in the farms, and I mean, it just changed everything. I had been on bikes, you know, dirt bikes and stuff as a younger guy, um, had an ATV. A uh, little, little backstory on, on the UTVs. ATVs would be considered a saddle, like a horse, right? You got a horse, you got somebody riding front and back. Sometime, I think, in the 70s, maybe late 70s, uh, Kawasaki created, they put that seat and they put it side by side. And now it's called a side by side. That's what those are, or the UTV. And they sold fairly well. There were some issues with them early on. Um, they still sell the Kawasaki Mule. Polaris, of course, brought the Ranger in and it, it just became the actual workhorse of the farm and the ranch. I mean, what farmers were using horses for, uh, they were using these UTVs for. Then it became kind of a sport, you know, people were climbing and running and doing fun things with them and pulling things with them. And um, so that started the craze. Uh, then they got more sporty and more involved, and now you can get a, a Razor 1000 Turbo that will set you back on your haunches and be able to climb up mountains and you know have all kinds of fun. Uh, they've got races out in the desert on these things, which are also fun. But I got into this business, to answer your question, is because I enjoyed doing it myself. I got out of the finance business um, uh, around the crash time back in 08. Uh, did not want back in, to be honest. <laughs> but I, they pulled me back in. Uh, a guy that I knew started a dealership down in Ozark, Missouri, and he needed some finance help. And anyway, he was opening a power sports store. And so I got in it, and I'm like, man, this is a lot of fun. These customers are a whole lot different than the customers I was, you know, working with. And again, that want versus that need customer. And, but I had a lot, of co a lot in common with them. So I enjoyed it. Did that for yeah, several years. When we opened up the lot here, I had an opportunity. I called one of the guys that I had worked with in the past um, out of Texas and had the Benchy model uh, that we carry on the side-by-sides and the ATVs. Asked him if they had a Kansas City dealer, and he said, no, we don't. We've got a store just south of there. And I said, well, what's my regional number? And he told me, he said, you'll qualify. And I said, great. So I got into the motorsport business here at the KCRV's lot. And they don't stay long. I mean, I've seen as we've moved a go-kart, a couple of four-wheelers, a few side-by-sides, and we've even had to throw in a trailer here and there, right? Indeed. And it's a, it's a bit of a undertaking to get these things out to where you need to go and actually enjoy them. You know, we're here on an RV lot. You would expect a way to get them out to the playground, but just playing with them out in the campgrounds and out in the wilderness, like you said, isn't the only thing these are used for. These are actually util utility devices. Uh, and I don't know that people were spraying fence lines from horseback back in the day. <laughs> Uh, but you said that, you know, the, the four-wheeler kind of took over some of the things you were doing from horseback. Um, tell me about some of the purposes, some of the things that you can use our, our motorsports for. Well, I mean, anything that you're doing, in, especially in the winter months, you've got farmers that have got to get out hay to the fields, and it's hard to get a truck. And uh, a lot of times they don't want to take horses because they'll come up, you know, 
with a broken leg and they have to put them down. So there are a lot of times they had to wait and you lose cattle. So this changed the game. Uh, dairy farmers, dairy farmers are the hardest working guys in the country, right? They have to get a, the crack of dawn every day, they get out and feed those things, milk those cows. I mean, it made their life a little easier, but um, those were a couple of the things that it helped the farmers, the ranchers, the dairy farmers with. But as far as like everyday use, I mean, you've got construction companies that use them on the sites. They're pulling, they're loading, they're throwing, carrying stuff with them. You've got the EMS that use them. They'll get into areas that they can't, firefighters, they can't get to by foot, and they'll use some of these UTVs, and they'll get out into and use those. We've got a, uh, a local EMS company here, and, and they've got, not only do they have the four-wheeler access, but they've got the, uh, the, uh, the four-wheeler and which turns into uh, an amphibious, so it gets out under the water as well. So, I mean, they really put it to work there. All right, and I've noticed a couple of these side-by-sides you had, they actually had dump beds. Yeah, so this thing's rigged up, ready to rock and roll for gravel, dirt, topsoil, whatever you want to put in it, and then you're able to take it around, dump it. I think that's pretty cool. Things have come a long way mm -hmm. since the last time I rode one of these devices, which would have been back in the 80s, and they only came with three wheels the old three-wheeler. And I think there might have been a lawsuit or two, and so they added a fourth wheel, is that correct? That's exactly right. <laughs> Those were dangerous times. Yes. But I, had, I hadn't realized how far things have come. Uh, you've got electronic fuel injection now. You've got, you know, the braking system are more advanced. Um, talk about the Benichis. Um, what are some of the features and benefits of our four-wheelers and other off-road off uh, all-terrain vehicles we have? EFIs, you know, electronic fuel injection. Uh, they come power steering, which mm. really makes things nice. Yeah. Uh, not all models, but a lot of them will come with the power steering as a feature. Uh, some of the models that we carry, the Benchy, uh, the Kimcos, uh, the Odes, which we have on that 800 Sport, they're all uh, gonna come fully equipped. We have them which are Necessary items in most cases are accessories, so it's gonna have a bimini top, it's gonna to have a windshield, a windshield that can move in or out. Uh, it's gonna come with a winch to haul, to move things with, or to pull things with, but- Or to get times, yourself out of trouble. To get yourself out of trouble, that's right. right. So I've winched myself out of a, uh, a time or two around a tree. And I'll tell you, they're, they, they come with a lot of benefits to them. Um, other than just all the accessories, the, the four stroke in these things are some of the best four strokes uh, out in the marketplace. And, um, and a four stroke is a, a, a good motor to have in all climates, but certainly when it gets colder, and that's you know, a good motor to have. And if you're using your, your UTV or your toy in the winter months, it's a go-to is to have that motor. So you got your four wheelers, you got your side by sides, you got some utility on the farm, you've got some workhorses that you're going to use out in the field, uh, and then you got a little bit different of an item right behind us, the Kimco scooters. Not really farm ready. I uh, could be. I mean, take take your choice, do whatever you want, um, but more just for moving around town and going short distances. These scooters are actually pretty tight. Tell us a little bit about the Kimcos. Yeah, Kimco is, they've been around a long time. As a matter of fact, I was introduced to that model down in Ozark, Missouri. I was not familiar with them. They are Taiwan Motors, uh, made in Taiwan. Their factory is in South Carolina here in the States. When they come from the manufacturer, they're ready to go. They come with a two-year warranty which is a year longer than the rest of the motorized scooters. And you can buy scooters at Walmart, you know, for 800 to 1,000 bucks. And that's what you're gonna get, a scooter from Walmart for 800 to 1,000 uh, bucks with no warranty. And so, Kimco, I mean, it's not uh, European or, you know, an Italian, uh, which has the high-end market on scooters, but it's not the big box either. So, it's a good scooter. We picked them up because 
uh, there is a crossover in our RV industry, uh, which we want our customers that have asked us, you know, to have these types of things. There's a lot of golf carts that are popular when people are staying at campsites and, and RV parks, uh, especially the long-termers, the, the snowbirds. They, they really love the, the scooters and those types of things to have with them. Obviously with scooters, it covers the whole gamut. You know, you don't have a motorcycle enthusiast necessarily. You may have a college student. student. Um, you may have a senior citizen that just wants to get out and, and get about, you know, town um, at a low speed or whatever, so. Or a medium speed. Or a medium speed. Yeah, because yeah. we do have a, a variety of different Kimco scooters. And although they're not a major Italian type scooter, uh, Kimco does hold the number three market in scooters in all of Italy. So they know about it. The, you know, this it's a good kept secret, actually. You were listening well. to Mark, I think, weren't you? No, no, no. I'm prepared. Man. Oh, okay. I did my homework. That a boy. I got online. They're that, good, good. The interwebs. You'd be yeah. amazed at what you can find on them. But what's cool about some of these scooters, um, you know, the like 200 or the like 150 or the 125, those things got some serious get up and go. They got some throttle on them. You can get up to 40, 50 miles an hour on one of those bikes. And I'll be honest with you, that scares me. I'm frightened <laughs> at that speed on a small scooter, which is why I kind of gravitate toward the Super 8s uh, because those are under 50 cc and you can actually drive them around without licensing them, insuring them. You just ride them like a, a bicycle, is that right? Well, yes and no. In certain states, okay. it, it is a state mandate on all transportation and DMVs regulate that. Um, but where we live, sure, it is. And that's all that actually, matters, or, really, right? Where this dealership is, anyway. Yeah. That's uh, that is one of the benefits uh, to having that. Now, with all ATVs, all scooters, all of these, I mean, you're going to have to be. I think it's 14 years old. If you're going to get on an ATV at that, you also have to have safety classes. And as a matter of fact, in the major manufacturers on the ATVs, they require it. So, right, Well, if you don't like the low speed lifestyle of a small scooter, or if you're not out on the farm and you don't need to spray your fence lines with uh, weed poison, you also have an option of picking up one of these sweet go-karts, right? <laughs> now, those are pretty tight. Yeah. Now you've been on the go kart. I have, and yeah. it scares me worse than the scooter. <laughs> That's, how could that scare you? It's on flow to the ground. If you wipe out, you're just going to get a couple skid marks. I'm an 85-year-old man trapped in the body of a 52-year-old dude <laughs> who has a 64-year-old body. So that's why I wow. fear that. That's a mix. <laughs> that's a mutt. No, but those um, work, man. Those... So yes, it yeah. is a toy for sure. Yeah. That is not going to be something that you're going to be uh, pulling the cows out <laughs> and, uh, on the ranch. You certainly aren't going to be toying around the campsite with it. Well, I guess you could, but not a real easy haul on that. You're going to need a, if you're not in a place where you, they're legal to run, you're going to need a trailer because that's where you're going to go. You're going to go to the trails, you're going to go to the sand, you're going to, they're meant to play there. And, uh, and that one's a little 200 cc, that Benchy. You'd think at 200 cc's, it's not going to go very fast, but as you well know, it will get up. That, that I think pushes at about 45 miles an hour uh, on a flat. Mm -hmm. And you can wind the RPMs up pretty good on that. And it, uh, um, but, uh, all of them, uh, you know, the scooters, the UTVs, ATVs, the golf carts. Uh, we won't. We'll talk about that in a second on those. But gas mileage is oh, yeah. wonderful on those. So the like 200, which you like, is the uh, 85 miles to the gallon. So that is a benefit for everybody, no matter you know what you're using them for, is to have to get out and tool around town. Same thing on the UTVs, uh, the sport or even the ranch, to know that you can fill that tank and you can either go work all day or go play all day and not have to worry about it. So that, that's a big thing. Are there any other items besides what you already have in stock that you're looking to bring in? Uh, yeah, there are. Um, I don't know that I want to tell you about it. Don't it's tell kind me. Of a secret. Yeah. I mean, um... keep keep it on the down low. <laughs> we'll do a follow-up show. So we do have a couple of uh, companies that have been kind of 
uh, knocking on our door, if you will, and uh, there's something out there that I want, uh, and it comes in a, in a four-seater or uh, a crew. They're popular, they come, a lot of them are gonna be in your higher CCs. Uh, there's one that is 1,000 CC, I think there's another one that's right at 800, and I believe there's even a 700. And do they have wheels or do they fly? Both. What do you describe? No, they're, they're four-wheelers. <laughs> yeah, they're four-wheelers, and they can sit you and three of your best friends. Yeah, I have only got one friend, so then that's going to be hard to You may have way. to take out an ad. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so to answer your question, I am, um, as you know, I'm going to probably bring in some more toys. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And besides our, our selection here, are people able to come to the shop and, and like our RVs, are they able to consign any of these? Or is that something you're considering? Would you purchase some from somebody? Let, let them know their options if they had their own motorsports they were looking good. to Yeah, good question. And I think we touched on this or in another episode on the consignment. And uh, in fact, yes, we've had some people contact us on um, some of our sport, on the sport UTVs, which is fairly popular right now. Um, We've had some guys come in, wanted to trade some of their old beat up stuff that they've yeah. worn out on some of the new stuff. And I'm not as crazy about doing the trades on them. Uh, I certainly don't want to you know, offend anybody by telling them that that is not going to be worth anything, but I don't uh, want to do that. But consignment wise, if it's a good item, an item that's highly sought after, you know, like a Polaris, like a Can-Am. The market in, in the sport UTV right now is kind of changed back to the uh, Japanese uh, who really kind of started on the metrics. Uh, Honda brought out the Talon last year. Oh my goodness, it is a, uh, it's really, uh, not only is it competing in some of the dirt races, sand races, some of the climbing stuff that's going on. I mean, and they're, you know, with the Can-Am Maverick and the, the Polaris Razor, which are always the kind of number one and two. But that Talon, it, it's, it's huge. It's, we hope to get that. There was the guy in here a few weeks ago and he had had his and had, cannot drive it anymore. So we were talking about consigning that. Um, but, and we do, uh, to, the other part of that was this deal came about uh, on the 400 Bergman. Uh, it's a scooter, it's a go fast scooter. Uh, Suzuki makes a good scooter and good ATV. Uh, this particular model, the guy needed to sell it and instead of consigning it, I just went ahead and bought it because I knew I could probably flip it and we put a new battery in it and now it really goes fast. Yeah, my face almost melted. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> that paints a picture. And like most things with wheels here on the lot, you could probably find a way to finance these, can't you? Indeed, yes, yeah. of course. I mean... <laughs> you were born financing things, weren't you? Uh, these items are what I do, yes. I, I, wanna, I wanna be able to get them and be able to get them a good rate, good term, good payment. And, you know, a lot of these, like this one, probably will not be a finance. It just doesn't sell for that much. Um, but we could if yeah. some, somebody came in and wanted to do it. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's right. This guy can make it happen. So, and then of course the the new introduction to the to the store this week is our new e-bikes. Uh, the e-bikes, of course, have made a splash in the country. Uh, of course, like everything else, it started on the West Coast. Of course, there are a lot of granola people on the West Coast, so electric everything is big there. And I believe that these had a huge huge market impact on just scooters in general, but in electric scooters. So I uh, literally saw one in my neighborhood and wanted one. <laughs> so I contacted the distributor and I said, you know, how much do these things cost? And how much do you give me for two, three or four of them? And so we worked out a deal and now I have the the Chopper series. We've had them in the store three days, or on the lot, I should say, and we, 
<laughs> get a, a lot of interest. We had, there's a Harley, large Harley dealer, Gail's Harley's across the highway. She does great work over there. And so these Harley guys, big guys come in and they actually, and their, uh, the women they were with were also, there was four of them. And they gravitated to these things. Of course. Like, no way. <laughs> and so they get on with all their gear and stuff. And on t I wish I had had my phone and camera with me. But yeah, it was, they're like, no way. These are really cool. So I felt OK. Well, we're talking about toys. <clears throat> and our eyes are lighting up like little kids at Christmas time. Yes. Like we just got a whole new set of brand new toys. And that's what's, kind of, that's what's really cool about being here, JE, is that this is fun, man. This is made to be fun. We enjoy ourselves. We enjoy seeing the look of, on people's faces when they come in and they look at these products. And you can just only imagine what kind of mess they're getting ready to get themselves into. And it's very interesting. I saw your face when you yeah, got on that. I did. Bike. It was pretty cool. <laughs> and you got uh, it in reverse. Yeah, yeah. I did. It that was, was cool. It was nice. There's no chain for me to have my shoestring get caught up in and fall off of. Yeah. Uh, so that was nice. Um, are there any other things about the motorsports that you wanted to hit on? Kind of like the RVs, I think it's important. You kind of touched on the finance, but you know, when you buy and look at, to buy anything, you know, you want to buy something that is going to last. And if there is a problem because of, you know, uh, a defective part or potentially some labor that went into that, that you want to know that it can be fixed. That's where the service part of this comes in. So we offer service on all of our motorsports. Um, we have what's called a break-in service. We do that, we provide that to our customers, uh, meaning usually on a, on a motorsport like one of these, uh, anywhere from five miles or five hours to 10 miles, 10 hours, something like that, you wanna get in, you've given it enough time to break in, and, and, uh, but you wanna get in, get the oil changed, check all the fluids, make sure the belts are tight, make sure you know the brake cables are good, make sure all of these things are done. We provide that, and that's uh, part of our um, dealer prep on these things. So, but in addition to that, when I looked at different opportunities for these products, I wanted to make sure, like I mentioned on the Kimco's, it had a warranty. And with that, it now is eligible for some of the products that Brandon provides. With uh, Power Sport, Motorsport World, um, they also provide, you know, like on the walls here, is RPM1, which is one of the best warranties on those. But you can only get it if it has a manufacturer's coverage, which you'll find in the Power Sport industry, a lot of this stuff does not come with any warranty on it or very limited, zero type of service, so you don't know where to go to get it serviced, and that confuses people and gives the whole industry kind of a bad taste. But, And on the other products as well, we have a minimum of one year on those, so warranty is big on these. But keep in mind what they are. A warranty is not going to protect that, it's not gonna be the, the full Band-Aid for you going out and running this thing up on some rocks and tearing up the tires and the seats and any of the wear and tear items, but it is gonna cover that frame, that engine, that transmission and the drive axle, which are of course key components and, and expensive with parts and labor. Awesome, so we've been talking motorsports down here in South Grandview, right off of 71 Highway, and we've got 81,000 cars drive by our location every day and they're always glancing down at the lot. So if you wanna come down, maybe work out a consignment, maybe you got a really tight motorsport that you wanna get rid of, or maybe you just wanna get a new scooter, come on down, check us out. And uh, I guess if that's it, J.E., are you ready to end this thing for the day? wrap it let's wrap it so on behalf of jay cornwell i'm john thomas thanks for joining us on out and about and thanks for joining us here at kcrvs.com